Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in Kaiserreich. I almost said Old World Blues, but this is Kaiserreich, in which we're playing as that beautiful Dominion of Canada. Last time we established ourselves at, well, Canada's not in the best position it could be in. We're in a little bit of a depression, and but we did find the or found the head or the IEDC for technology, and we do have a couple comments to get through. And I'm joined here with my cat Binky, who does it, who wants to leave my room. But anyways, so we're doing direct the exiles for now. And we want to invite other people to the conference. Uh, yeah, wait, why not? Investment in the Dominion of Canada. Huh. Okay. Oh, so pooling the Entente's industrial resources can help expand the Dominion of Canada's industrial base. Though we must be aware, other IEDC members might become jealous if we focus too much on our own economy without sharing. Yeah, we should probably invite everyone else to do that. And we're trying to do build Crown Corporations in Toronto for civilian factory. Allegation councils, but let's go ahead and invest, or invite, I mean, the French Empire. How about that? We already read this yesterday, and we want to keep that on screen for now. And I did ask you guys yesterday, what land auction we should go with? Mobile warfare, which we uh, would emphasize tanks, or superior firepower? And I asked you guys yesterday, and overall, there's support for both. But at the time of this recording, there is more support, ultimately, for superior firepower, because as much as I want to go with tanks, and I might use a few tanks here and there, we're going to go superior firepower, because as someone pointed out, we most likely will not have enough oil, enough fuel, to have a navy, an air force, and tanks. So it's actually probably smart to go down the path of the superior fire power doctrine. So thank you very much. We read this event yesterday at the conscription debate, so we're not going to read this now. I did not click on it just because it hurts our political power by quite a bit. All right, but let us let time go on. We have other comments to get to. And how much political power? Oh, we're going to be barely getting any. Ah, the French Empire agrees. The French government has sent the wisdom of her offer and agreed to join the IEDC, including an initial investment of 25 political power. The first French economists and engineers have already begun to arrive in the Dominion of Canada. Great. Absolutely great. Let's invite Australasia, perhaps, next. Oh, we can invest in them as well. We really wanted to, but we, don't, we won't have enough political power, man. We don't have enough right now. We're at minus 154 or so. And they agreed to join and do the exact same thing and invest 25 more. Cool. Uh, ooh, and we have some federal relief camps. Good. Now, it's recommended from the comments yesterday that I go with the Dominion of Canada, go a paternal autocrat or something like that. I honestly don't understand or know a whole lot about this, to be honest with you. Just because I don't ever play Canada, I'll be honest. Uh, but this is my first time, and let's see what happens. It looks like, too bad we can't get more than one route. We're kind of forced one way, but that's okay. Imperial Conference, status of the Privy Council. Let's do the Imperial Conference next, maybe. The ISAC. Oh, we get... Oh, another research slot could be so good early on. Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm too tempted. I'm going to go this way first. Then a number of university presidents and scientific leaders meeting in Toronto have called for the formation of a new organization to be to coordinate research among the member states of the Entente. The working of coordinating with these links to, is to be carried out by the Imperial Scientific and Academic Council, located and funded by Canada, with contributions from the rest of the Alliance. Yes. A billion times yes. Uh, Union of South Africa, we will probably try to help them out as well. Partico Socialista Italiano, no wins. Moderate Socialism, we shall see. And now, oh, 0 0.07 a day, good lord. Oh, god. Now by Bonomi and Matteotti. Union of South Africa agrees and spends 25 political power as well. Great. Gilbert K. Chesterton dies. Let's invite uh, Sardinia next. British writer Gilbert, Gil Gilbert, Gilbert Keith Chesterton died today in his exile in Ottawa at, 80, at 62. Wow, that's kind of young. A prolific author whose most well-known novel is certainly The Man Who Was Thursday. He was a devout Roman Catholic and a Christian apologist. Two reasons that forced him to leave England to avoid persecution after the Syndicalist Revolution. The Prince of Paradox died. Oh, Paradox. Oh. A royal visit to the Dominion of India. And... Oh! We have... A white piece? Sardinia uh, also agrees. Great. Hey, India, great job. Now we can stop spending fuel on you. I love it. Yeah, that's is probably actually really smart. We're not going to be able to afford that much uh, for any fuel thing. Let's invite India next. We help you out. You should be able to join us, right? And, of course, India does join. King Edward takes time off. After recent concerns from the king's physicians regarding his personal health, King Edward has informed the Canadian government that he's going to be taking up some personal time away from his public duties over the next few months. I see. Eh, okay, whatever. Even though you are directing directing the exiles, but let's invite the West Indies Federation. Now, we do have a little bit of an issue with them. Uh, they're basically using uh, what we call slave labor down there. But they agree to join. Great! Um, 
You know. Costs for this decision are taken from the IEDC pool? You know, that's not a bad idea. IEDC investment! is They are willing to invest in the Dominion of Canada, though it does not build in any particular Canadian state, in so much as boosts our overall industrial capacity through the Entente's economic cooperation. These factories remain so long as our participation in the Alliance persists. In what direction shall we encourage this new investment in civilian factories, military factories? I'm going to go civilian factories, because we need it right now. And since we have another hundred, so we're going to go with Canada, then the French Empire, because I don't want to just use it on myself the entire time. Well, how about the French, because... Well, why not? Actually, who's bigger right now in terms of factories? 25-ish, or 27. 21. 9. Oh, man, the Entente's not looking strong, man, I'll be honest. 8? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Well, French Empire is next. Actually, I, do I want to be disappointed by seeing how much they have in Sardinia? Do they have at least three? No, they only have two. Jesus Christ. All right, French Empire. Your turn. Has not invested within the last year. That's fine. Coup d'etat in Siam. It is what it is. So, next up, then, we'll invest in Australasian Confederation and Union of South Africa, maybe. But we got to do Canada all the time, because we have, by far... The most amount of factories, even though it's not very much. Manuel Cartes, or Carles, assumes full control of Argentina. So be it. Whatever. Didn't I get my... Didn't I give divisions to India? Can I have my divisions back? Demonstration at the king's speech. Yes, please. So, a campaign stepped by Mackenzie King in Toronto was marred today when it was met by a large demonstration organized by the Orange Order of Canada. The order, which celebrates Canadian ties with the British Empire, has been... And has been campaigning strenuously, or campaigning for a greater action against the Union of Britain, has declared the Liberal no conscription position as an outrage that threatens the very survival of the Empire. The raucous chanting and shoutings prevented the King from continuing the speech, or King from continuing his speech, and altercations between the Liberal supporters and the Orange Order almost ended up in a riot before the police were finally called in to intervene. They shouldn't have been there. Less stability, market liberalism. Uh, they were fairly unfairly provoked. Oh, crap. I don't know. I don't really care. Mm, I don't mind market liberals. I really don't. Conservatives, let's balance them out. They shouldn't have been there. We're gonna lose stability anyways. Whatever. Oh, so we sent them. What did we send them? Just one thing. We sent them two divisions of Marines, right? Yeah. Cool. Come on home, boys. Come to Vancouver. And you have no one leading you. Uh, Divart probably. Yeah, that's probably Adrian. Oh, we're gonna need some more army XP. Oh, he has an eye patch. That's kind of cool. And also, someone liked it that I chose Canadian. Was it Canadian generals or was it British generals? I don't remember which one. All that I remember. No, it was America as America. As an American. Cool. Anyways. But we do like playing as Canada sometimes. 36. Construction speed. Oh, about 37. It's 100% bonus. Resource efficiency. Um, I might need this. How much resources do we need or, or extract? Oh my god, we got almost nothing here. Ah, Canada, why? Just, just make more resources. <laughs> Canada, why? Uh, three divisions at a time. Mm. We're going to need at least a couple divisions here and there. Save it for later. What we're going to do... We could get better artillery. We could get at least 1936 tanks. We got, we already established last time. Letter ships are not doing too bad, actually. Plane-wise, let's at least get some better carrier planes. Because we're definitely going to be using carriers quite a bit in the upcoming wars. Uh, and I will get to more comments soon. It's just we got to wait. We don't want to have to wait, but we've got other stuff to address first. Uh, fuel gain... Uh, I'm just gonna get, grab this, because we're gonna probably need to build some stuff up later on. Alright, so, March Against Conscription. A giant march against Bill, Bill C7, and the prospect of national conscription has taken place in both Montreal and Quebec City. With smaller marches taking place in Ottawa and Vancouver. It seems like if I don't choose to build stuff fast enough, all this is all this is going to do is hurt us. Opposition to conscription is beginning to hit ahead, with many of the signs in the marches declaring, Get the exiles out, and no war for Canada in either French or English. Members of the Conservative Party have openly suggested the marches are being organized by the Union of Britain in order to destabilize the Entente, but Mackenzie King and the Liberals have treated them seriously and doubled down on the party's opposition to widespread conscription. <clears throat> we shall see what happens. There is no guarantee. Create the ISAC, cool. And National Research Council, and then we'll go do the bill. Cool. The National C Research Council was founded during the Bell Creek to advise the Canadian government on scientific and on science and research. Providing, by providing the organization with additional funding and support, we can expand our technology base to the benefit of both industry and military, which would be pretty good. Pretty good. Left KMT, declare war on Shandong clique, and they're fighting each other. So be it. Wallonia, Balonia, join the Rex Pact. 
Keep building, 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 guys. We need construction done yesterday. Ten years ago, we needed it done. Subs, go and finish up with your training with using 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 up whatever fuel we have. We have another division available. All right, that's the case. Stop making divisions. I I don't want to say that, but stop making divisions. We gotta save that manpower. Oh, Canada, why? So when the war breaks out in the states, this was involves a couple comments from yesterday as well. It was recommended I take out New England, which hopefully we will do. We'll take New England over. U.S. is not going to like that. And it would be my goal to support the PSA, at least. I think that would be a good goal to have. Support the PSA, take out New England. MacArthur's cool and all, but <clears throat> we'll support the PSA. And I'll probably send him some tanks. These aren't great. But the enemy probably won't be able to pierce these guys, and they could probably do okay. But Duplessis wins Quebec election. Coming off a campaign based on Quebecois dissatisfaction with the economic downturn and threat of national conscription, Maurice Duplessis and the Union Nationale... <clears throat> have won a majority government in the Quebec provincial elections. D has sworn to fight any plan to enact conscription, and there are even threats of calling for a referendum on the future of Quebec and the Confederation should that happen. This is a clear sign of just how serious the divisions between the English and French Canadians are and have become. I know that the split of opinion on Canada's role in the upcoming war is so sharp. God. Oh, God. I just want research, man. Is that too much to ask for? Just a little bit more research. We need some more motorized, too. That's not good. Am I making motorized? We need tanks, too. Oh, I don't have enough for anything. Canada, why can't you just have a billion industry? Bennett assaults a reporter. At a campaign shop in Hamilton, <clears throat> Bennett aggressively questioned, was aggressively questioned, by a French-Canadian reporter over the conservative plans for conscription. Outright implying that the conservatives intended to send French-Canadians into the front lines in order to limit their threat to Anglophone domination. And surprisingly, the temp tempestuous Bennett's response was to attack the man, causing a near ride, near ride that dominated the newspapers for a few days. God dang it, dude. Bennett. Bennett, dude. Come on. Okay, now let's actually focus on this. Uh, the Imperial Conference. There's not been a gathering of the Dominion since the fall of Home Isles, but it's been decided that now's the time, even if Canada is able is at the head of the table instead of the Un United Kingdom. The Dominions must prepare to work together, if there's any hope of defeating the syndicalists together. At the very least, we are at least on partial mobilization, which could be a lot worse. Hey, we got another civilian factory to use those. That's very nice. Jabal Chamar, Kriko Warnej. Oh, do we... Ah... Fifth research slot. That's so nice. It's 36, though. I want to do that. I want to do that. Just wait a little bit longer. We could do that director fire. Not really worth it, though. Could do some of this. We're getting some of that. I'm considering using heavy fighters because we're going to need that range and doing some naval stuff there. That's not bad either. We're doing our land auction. Just go and get up some better artillery for now. It's 108 days. It'll help us out. Smacking down the enemies is always a nice thing. And repairs. We're doing okay. Ship wise, we're trying to make an improved cruiser. That's cool. And it's also recommended, besides helping out over in the United States, we're going to help out somewhere else, so the rise of the Nationalist Party. The main competition for the Liberals among those opposed to conscription appears to have become the Nationalist Party of Canada, led by Henry Herbert Stevens. The Nationalist Party's platform began as Republican and anti-monarchist, but has evolved into a stance, which could see Canada pulled out of the Entente entirely. Stevens is expected to win in his British Columbia state, but so far, he has been unable to gain traction in Quebec, where the party could do more than eat at the Liberal domination there. Interesting. Ah, national populism, huh? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Good guy, can I get out of this this political pothole? Political power pot oh my god, what happened? Stability probably. Creation of the international avant garde. King Edward's lifestyle party. Party lifestyle. Since assuming his father's throne. King Edward has been lighting up the Canadian social scene, throwing parties at the royal estate and mingling with socialites on a regular basis. Indeed, the new king appears to be enjoying his new status so much as led to a growing commentary in the Canadian newspaper that Edward doesn't seem to be taking his role with a gravity that someone would expect for a British exile. I saw him laughing and carrying on with the lords and ladies, one witness stated. You'd think he didn't have a care in the world and that he may as well be back in London. Monarchists have been quick to defend the king, saying that his social appearances are quite normal and should be welcomed after King George V's long period of reclusiveness, following the royal exile from the home isles. Oh dear. Oh no, oh dear. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let's grab weapons and equipment, because I'm going to look at marines. We need armored cars. But Vickers, MG, and Stokes, Moldos would be delightful to have as well. Oh god, that fuel. Oh god, no. So, King Edmund Allenby dies. General Allenby did die in this exile at Ottawa, aged 75. He tried since 25. He was most... Mostly known as a commander in chief of the British expeditionary forces in the Middle East. After achieving major victories thanks to the Arab Pope, such as taking Jerusalem, he was forced to withdraw as the Valkyrie went bad for England. By honoring him with state funerals, King Edward VIII wants to show his desire for revenge. <sighs> My political power, let's get Matilda. Why? Why political power? Why must you do this to me? And we 
What type of division? These guys are 15 combo with. Good lord. 18. Oh, good lord. Uh, that's even worse. Division 2 is w the way to go. How much. What, what do we have? Hmm. Hmm. Not ideal. Gonna be honest, really not ideal. America, can you break apart so we can take over? Like, stop. Ah, the election of 36. The moment has come. The country heating or heading to the polls to decide between the liberals under. Mackenzie King, and the Conservatives under Bennett. Either way, it is certain that the election will be close and there should be a prospect of a minority government. It seems likely the role of the Kingmaker would be given to the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation. We've already declared that they would support a Liberal government if it came down to that. Uh, Liberals? Who are we currently ruled by? The Liberals, still. Uh, King Edward VIII, of course. Liberals win a slim majority. Oh my goodness, the Conservatives? Elections are held every five years? <clears throat> hmm... And the CCF. Let's see. The Cooperative Commonwealth Federation. CCF is a social democrats. Slim majority nearly win the day. We're already liberals for now? What is... I, I, look, I'm not Canadian, man. I don't know about the politics. I know about U.S. stuff a lot better. I was going to go with the liberals win a slim majority. Just... Oh, God. Now they're dominating everything. 63%. God dang. Edward congratulates Mackenzie King. The King... Has taken to the airways and voices support for the winners of the recent election, even though I probably should have chosen the other side for a better stance to retake the home islands. Urging all Canadians to accept the democratic process and announce his full support of Mackenzie King and the Liberals. The people have spoken in place of renewed faith in the government. He stated, I hope and believe it was the right choice, and that together we can move forward and find the right path for Canada and the Empire in the years to come. We're all in this together. Uh, don't start singing about that song, though, the Imperial Conference. We'll talk about that very soon. And which would do the fate of the Senate. The Canadian Senate consists of appointees by the Sovereign, which, since the fall of the UK, has consisted almost entirely of the British exiles. Considering the Senate has ultimate control over bills passed by the House of Commons, has the time finally come to enact the Senate reform? Ooh, more stability and more support, not bad. With the 8th Imperial Conference getting ready to begin, the Prime Minister should consider what our focus should be. Should we advocate that the Dominion of Canada is best suited to retaking the Home Isles as soon as possible, or should we instead focus on improving the various Dominions of the Empire so that they are better prepared for war in the long run? Canada is key to retaking the Home Islands? More political power. Ooh, that's not bad. I like that a lot. We must first improve other dominions. We'll see better imperial bonuses. They're nice and all, but we gotta help ourselves out, man. I mean, if we don't do anything, we're kinda sunk. And we gotta build, build, build. And the conference is 36. Today, the conference begins with leaders representing the remnants of the British Empire gathered in Canada. After an opening ceremony headed by Prime Minister Austin Chamberlain, head of the British government in exile, the Prime Minister of Canada is the first to speak, giving a rousing speech. The British Empire cannot be called British without liberating our fellow Britons from the horrors and tyranny that exists within the so-called Union of Britain. Towards that end, he called on all the Dominions to support Canada in building up its strength to meet that challenge. Bravo, Prime Minister. Oh, God. British Indian delegates speak as well. The next to speak is a delegate from the Dominion of India, who gives a speech about how the British Indian military is in dire need of proper training and the upgrading of its firearms. Without such, he fears the Dominion of India will be ill-equipped to assist in a distant war against the syndicalists, and he requests that his fellow Dominions send whatever advisors they can to help. Our best advisors are on their way. And I'll help him out for 180 days. That's not bad. We can help each other out. That's good. You know. West Indian delegate speaks. The next to speak is from the West Indies Federation, who gives a speech about the dire need for investment and capital funds. The British exiles have channeled so much of their funds into helping Canada through the Great Depression, it feels that perhaps some of it could be spared to help and assist the West Indian economy. We shall do our best. Yes, absolutely. This is all good feeling, feel, good feeling together. South Africa. Uh, who says that the South African military is also in need of assistance. While his nation is not alone in needing his help, he expressed his hope that the Dominion of Canada would dig deep to spare the needed advisors, and that in the future, the Union of South Africa would do the same. Our best advisors are on the way. Cool. Cool. And Australasian delegate speaks as well, who spoke at length about the need for scientific investment. The economy needs modern science in order to not only further stagnate, while the military needs the most modern weapons. He asked that the Dominions send what they research assistance they could to the Australian Confederation so they could better prepare for war. We will aid the research as best as we can. That is an interesting take on that. Very interesting. Do we have anyone else in the conference? Maybe not. And the end of the conference is now over. We can focus on putting into practice the decisions that came out at the conference. There is hope that perhaps this marks the dawn of a new era for the Dominions, and a strengthening of bonds, but only time will tell. God save the king. Absolutely. Man, we're getting this done relatively quickly, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. Oh, God. I'm, you know what? I'm glad I, put, I invested in ourselves, because we are just out of political power. 0.25 a day. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Imperial trade? I mean, that's really nice. Until That's really just so nice to see. Ooh, and Jack Reed, elected president of the U.S.? Oh my god, no, no. This is one of the worst timelines that could ever have happened. Oh, good lord, no. Not if anyone but Jack Reed. 
you could have gotten Floyd Olsen, you could have got Huey Long, you could have got uh, Garner, well, of all people, Jack Reed. Of course, it would be my Canadian cam campaign that Jack Reed would be elected president of the United States. Mac Daddy, please take him out. P please take out that syndicalist. Ah, superior firepower, though. More soft attack. Uh, let's get some more organization. That'd be really good for delay. That's really, really good. And the fate of the Senate. So, uh, I'll think about, think about that in the status of the Privy Council. The British government in exile has acted on emergency power since the country's downfall, wielding power only through its status and the King's Privy Council. It's been over a decade, however, and there are many who feel that the time has come for a change. Since the arrival of the exiles of Canada, King George V appointed many of the numbers to the Canadian St Senate, mainly as rewards for valiant service to the defense of the Empire. But since King Edward's ascension, the appointments of the exiles have continued to the point where the Senate is often referred to as the Canadian House of Lords. Many members of the government are saying that the time has come to insist on Senate reform, passing a law requiring senatorial appointments be confirmed by the House of Commons. Considering the Senate has the power to reject bills, this could be a result, or could result in a showdown with the King, unless he decides that it is better not to anger the government of his host country while in exile. We need reforms at once. Urged the King to appoint more Canadians, which could help with political power, it's the King's prerogative to choose as he wishes. Authoritarian democracy, influence of British exiles. Let's see. So we're up here. Popularity of King Edward's low. The inf that's really hard to read. Influence of the British exiles is very high. That's a king's prerogative. Rar. The Tories. Cool. And that gives. Oh, we have positive political power. British operative capture. We have ways of making you talk, you son of a gun. Um. So, we've got political power. I could invest in here, but we're not going to support press exiles. Very high British exiles. Popularity of the king is low. Uh, popularity might be good to increase. I'm not sure that's going to really hurt us. I really don't know. I really don't know if that's going to, that's good or bad. Republican victory in Brazil. Okay, as expected. Uh, I remember there was a comment a while ago saying that I should play, or recommended I play, as totalist Brazil. So, maybe someday I'll get there, but not yet. Boat of Arms Factory. Mm, can I do anything here? I, If we save our money, we might be able to get up to partial mobilization. Or is it worth spending what we have now and getting another military factory or civilian factory? Ooh, that's a tough decision. That's going to be a very long time to wait, so we must just go and do that so we don't have to think about that later on. Keep trading, keep making more stuff. Oh god, we lost it as well down here. Oh man, that's not good. Uh... Are the ships done training? Well, you guys are. That's good. Oh, except for you. Oh, what the heck. Train. Both of you train if you need it. But only if you need it. We don't have so much fuel. Italian government falls. We got some interwar artillery. Let's go ahead and grab this. More output. I'm going to get... This is, we already have a bonus to this. Go and get construction too first. That's fine with me. Jabal Shamar. East Turkestan. Clear one the Kumul Khanate. 0.19. Anglo-French tensions. We gotta get rid of that quickly. Obviously, we're gonna probably hit by, get hit by another debuff, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Oh God, Canada, why? Not great. Do we have any more fighters? Ah, Interchange Revolution is defeated. Cool. Oh, we do have a few more. We're gonna wait on that and let's go ahead and choose the Draft Bill C7. With the election finally over, it is time for the government to concentrate on Bill C7, which will determine the country's approach to conscription, the military, industry, and international security. The debate will begin the moment it's introduced in the House of Commons, and will consume the government's attention until it is complete. Invest in natural resources sounds like a really good thing. Economic recovery? Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, I should have done that right before. Oh crap, there's so much we have to do. But the status of the Privy Council. The British government in exile has operated on emergency powers for the past 10 years, existing without elections and unable to exercise legal influence outside of their status as the King's Privy Council. Recently, however, there's been indications that the Prime Minister Austin Chamberlain's time is up. Many exiles see him as a party responsible, uh, partly responsible for the loss of the Home Isles and have been urging King Edward to replace him. We could push the King to appoint a more moderate candidate, however, someone more likely to work with the Canadian government. We could also urge the King to call for an election among the exiles in Canada, though how much of a legal mandate that would give the new Prime Minister is questionable. Still, it's more democratic than an appointee. Chamberlain's replacement. Um, get more war support. So, let's see. Mackenzie King, who gives us lots of political power, more stability and war support. How less political power, more speed for other stuff. Ernest of the Point, okay, more political power, more construction speed. Person of influence, Zukhan, huh. Wow, there's a lot of people here. There are a lot of people here I've never heard of. Then again, I'm not Canadian. Uh, we should push for a more moderate candidate. Influence of British exiles will go down. 
Robert Cecil gives you... He says, authoritarian Democrat, more political power, recruit by population factor, a vote by the exiles should be organized. Anthony Eden. Or Eden. He's an authoritarian Democrat as well. Authoritarian, moderate candidate. Division attack goes up. Oh, oh I, I just... Um, uh, I want the, the king to pick him. God. Oh, I oh, get more war support, more attack. Ah, uh, 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 just okay. Sorry, it's, it's it's hard for me to, to figure out what I want to do because I I know very little about Canada. So, but debate on the proposed B bill C7 and its promises of sweeping changes to Canada's armed forces, industry, and national security has now begun. With the Liberal Party's slim hold on power, passing the bill might prove challenging, and with the defeated bill comes a fallen government. So, passing the bill is of extreme importance. Prime Minister Mackenzie King might have cons might have considered compromising with the loyal opposition, though not so much that he angers his own allies. Well, we'll see what happens. I have no idea. We're going to piss probably too many people off, and that's okay. Happy 1937. Let's grab some more outputs immediately. Disperse industry, because we need more... Uh, actually, we're doing kind of okay on some of the stuff. We need some stuff. So, national conscription. Perhaps the most important issue covered by the bill is that of conscription. The liberal government has promised French Canadians that it will not enact conscription at all, but there are those within the party who agree that the conservatives, that in Canada's manpower reserves, they are already dismally low. Changing our minds might get some agreement from the Conservatives on the bill, though it might almost cer certainly come at the cost of accusations of betrayal and perhaps even some defections from the Liberal side of the House of Commons. No conscription... Uh, conscription cannot be implemented except via the enact conscription decision. Limited form of conscription, if it's passed, will be enacted and cannot be raised higher except via enact full conscription decision. Uh, oh god. We have no choice, full conscription it is. Oh, crap. Oh, this is going to hurt me the entire game, I bet. Oh, why did the French and Canadians have to hate each other so much? Why can't you all just be American? <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to choose that. That just seems like the the worst choice to make. Keep... No, I can't do that because we've got to need some conscription. We're just going to go with the, the middle one. Now we're 50% liberal support. It, we have to. We have to. It, it just... Hmm. If I ever play Canada again, I'm probably going to go full extreme to one side, I'll be honest. Like, once I understand everything here, anger over the liberal betrayal, while the suggestion of limited conscription is seen by many as a compromise, more progressive members of the party are suggesting it is an outright betrayal and a vow to oppose the bill when it comes to a vote. Prime Minister Mackenzie King will have to work extra hard to get conservatives on board instead and turn the bill into a bipartisan measure. So be it. Always with the political power. Why can't I just have enough pee-pee, man? Just please. Please, this is, a good for, this is good for everyone. Oh my goodness, we need more tanks. Going to lower it by one. At least make some sort of tanks, because we're going to need them, man. Oh god, we made another division. No! Why must it pain me so? Bill C-7, the future of Canada's industry. Recovery from the Great Depression has left Canadian industry in a deplorable state, and the government insists that the nation needs to industrialize at an incredibly rapid pace, or rate, if it hopes to challenge Union of Britain's power. The Liberal plan put forward by C.D. Howell suggests that Canada should focus on funding urban infrastructure and civilian economy. Thus, those combined with incentives should bring the needed military investment in the long run. The Conservative plan is to nationalize the needed armament and naval industries now and build them up with the government funding even if the rest of Canada's industrial base lacks behind. Uh, let's see. Political power? A focus on a mix of civilian and arms factories. I like that. I really do. But before I do that, I must see the infrastructure map mode. And never mind, because this is Kaiserreich, so even if you build up more infrastructure, you do not get more resources. For urban infrastructure and civilian investment in the long run. Needed armament and naval industries for now. Crap. Uh, you know what? If it's if it passes, is a cabinet minister perhaps a compromise between the two plans? Then I think that'd be good because we we're probably going to need to compromise here, at least a little bit with everyone at possible to get anything passed. This seems like such a divisive topic. Jesus. The Cairo Congress. I wonder where I've seen this before. Cool. We're just not interested right now. We, we just can't be. Oh, we can direct the exiles. Um, that's fine, I guess. Uh, the British exile arrested. A wealthy British exile, who's also a highly placed member of the King Edward's inner circle, was recently arrested for the murder of his wife, also an exile living in the Dominion of Canada. The charge brings up several sticky points, not least of which is whether Canadian courts have jurisdiction over British national. Other expatriates have been arrested in the past, but neither someone of such a high profile, and the press has pounced on the scandal to point to the point where the public lingers over each day's lurid headlines. King Edward is also personally 
willing to intervene on the man's behalf, though it would cost a great, the king a great deal of his reputation. And there are others who say it is time for the government to step in. If the king wishes to intervene, let him. Uh, allow the trial to play out. The Canadian government must be in... Oh, Nike's no. He's already low support. Can he go lower? Oh, it goes abysmal. Oh, yeah, it can go lower. Whoops. Ah, <laughs> uh, crap. The influence will decrease. Direct the exiles to in either increase their influence. Increase it. Increase. That's directed. Directing the British exiles. We've already read this, so increase assist the Canadian government. British exiles. Canadian industry needs improvement. Build an off map factory. King's popularity. Um, we probably need to do that. It's abysmal right now. Yeah. My bad. Didn't mean to do it like that. It just. It happens. It happens. I like more factories, but the BLC7 domestic security. Canada has been able to avoid the bitter class war that engulfed Britain after the Great War. But conflict between the Canadians and the British exiles is growing, as has syndicalist sentiment among Can Canada's labor unions. Both the Conservatives and the Liberals have suggested that the RCMP be granted sweeping power to crack down on dissidents, with a minister to act as chairman on a parliamentary committee to oversee the process. The Conservatives have proposed Maxwell Knight, renowned hardliner and British exile, to be the chairman. The Liberals, meanwhile, have said that Ernest Lapointe would do a better job. He may be more moderate in his views, but as an MP from Quebec, he is far more in tune with the French Canadians. Ooh, let's market liberalism. If it's passed, we'll be given special powers under the direction of Maxwell Knight. Lapointe will get the job done. Let's market liberal support. No secret police. We are all in this together. Hmm. I like political power. Oh, we can build an arms factory in Ottawa. Not a bad idea. We can do this as well. Uh, with increase the Australasian Confederation's stability, war support, mobilization, speed, army morale. Other main events may also occur during the year. Huh. We can help. Is it worth doing this? It might be suppress the exiles. Their influence gets low. Is it worth doing royal visits? It doesn't seem like it will really help us. It may help the other countries. But it doesn't seem like it's going to just directly help us out, which I'm most interested in right now. Let's raise a cap for now, and they'll get to focus more on oil and stuff like that. Uh, actually, let's do this too. Better light tanks. Oh my goodness, we need so much more things. I'm going to go ahead and invest in this. Another military factory. I think that'd be okay for now. Oh god, just Canada. Why? Why Canada? Why? Oh. But at least we've got 40 political power still. That's nice. A little bit of lag. Oh crap, it's America time. It's America time. On certain times. Oh, why? 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 No, 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 my son. Oh, the American Union state is there. Um, for now, let's go ahead and uh, stand off in America. I see. God dang it, Americans, you're too violent. You're way too violent. That's why we love you. Just, just have a king. Oh wait, Americans don't like kings. Oh, hmm. Uh, extraction, we might as well do that one. Just because that would help out at least the steel. This situation in America, though, the government is becoming alarmed at the rapidly developing crisis in the U.S., particularly with the rise of the Socialist Party of America. A syndicalist aligned nation on our southern border would be unthinkable. The violence is already terrible to the point that numerous state governors in the North American Northeast, lacking confidence in the federal government to maintain order, have asked us to step in should civil war break out. We do not have to answer the, the, your request yet, but once the deadline ends, we may very, very may well be forced to. Unbelievable. Do we have a deadline to answer them? Not yet, but obviously... Within two weeks, once this is done, we gotta focus on the Americanos. Yeah, the Americans of War. Civil War will begin within a month, so that's fine with me. Totally fine. But we're looking good on equipment. Even we're doing better on tanks now, too. Not tactical bombers, but with tanks. Please let me get New England. Oh, oh the Cynicalist game got New York City and New Jersey. Oh my god, and they got Minnesota. Not Iowa yet, but oh my goodness. Oh, shnikes. Let's go ahead and grab some fuel refining. We're going to need all the fuel we can get, son. Draft Bill C-7. With the debate on C Bill C-7 now coming to a close, the House Speaker has begun the roll call for voting to begin. Tensions are high and a failure by the government here would be catastrophic. We will know soon enough. Let's go ahead and choose a quick focus. Something not 70 days at a time. Quebec and... F oh, crap. Automatically bypass and unlock other focuses. Oh, no. Quebec and Flames. Oh, boy. The suppression of French Canadians. I don't know which way to go. Official bilingualism seems not like a bad idea. New status for Quebec. But I don't know. Invoke the war measures. Put them down. Tories become the ruling party. Control the House of Commons. Assign... Hmm. Oh, ruling party is authoritarian Democrat. Well, more than 20% support for the Tories. Oh. Uh, 42 days. More stability, more support. More political power. 
I gotta get down here quickly. So we gotta do CN Rail expansion. Rail networks are the arteries of the nation of Canada, and none are more so than the state-run state -run Canadian National Railway. Expanding this network can only strengthen the nation, and it will surely provide crucial, prove to be crucial, should we need to perform wartime supply and troops transport across the nation. As you can see, I'm completely ignoring the Navy and Air Force right now, and Army too. It, it passes! The votes have been tallied, and the Speaker of the House declared that the Bill C-7 has passed both within the House of Commons and in the Senate! Not everyone is in favor of the bill's measures, but it seems that both sides are eager to get the new laws implemented as soon as possible and see Canada move forward together. Political power, we remove a divided nation. Nice. Which is... Oh my god, finally. Here, here. We get limited conscription, which we are on volunteer only for now. We get compromised economic plan, better consumer goods, more max factories in a state, better output for dockyards and factories, get two factories, get another building slot, get the mounties, more stability, less damage to garrisons, Maxwell Knight... Oh, that is... Oh, oh, look at that. That's so beautiful. Oh, oh my goodness. Now, oh man, maybe, can I get some Canadian citizenship now? This is good. And now we have violent demonstrations in Quebec. Okay, Quebec, come on, man. Even though full conscription has not been implemented yet, the more limited form enacted by the Liberal government has still caused a strong reaction in Quebec. Throughout the province, demonstrations have broken out with signs carried that either call for Quebec separation from Canada or to lay down, lay with the Liberal betrayers. Well, the RCMP has been able to restore order so far, it's not without severe demonstrations having turned incredibly violent. Along with the promises that should full conscription ever be implemented, things will get far worse. Oh, it's going to get far worse. Let's just be real, it's going to get far, far worse. I can invest in here, not yet. Uh, I don't have... Serbic uh, crowns... Oh, what can I have to put? Oh, take it from the pool. I can, oh, I, oh, okay, that makes sense. America, Second American Civil War? Cool! Oh, and an act full conscription? We're gonna have to do that, so. Ah. Very cool. Ah, so! The French tensions lessen. With full conscription having not manifested, the tensions between the French Canadians and English Canadians is slowly lessening. Though the Quebecois, or the Quebecians, uh, do not trust the Canadian government not to change their minds, for now things have quieted considerably. That's a relief. Oh, yes! And American chaos. Yes! I love America! Chaos has taken over, taking our neighbors to the south, and even worse, the Socialist Party of America has promised or proclaimed a stronghold right off our southern border. A number of northeastern governors in New England, their states beset by syndicalist militia violence, have strongly asked the Canadian government to intervene. Clearly, they feel the federal government is incapable of the task, though some of our ministers feel this might be seen as some of the factions less as intervention as more as aggression. They say the matter should be debated in Parliament before any action is taken. For New England, at least, that might not be taken quick enough to save them. That'd be really weird. I've, I've said this to other people, like, living in New England must be really, really weird. Really, really weird. Oh, no, they did get Iowa. Oh, they didn't even get Southern Texas or... Oh, God. Ooh, hmm, that's not good. That's not good. No, 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 no. Hmm. What if I want to move in England as requested. No, we're moving in. I'm sorry, man. I am so sorry. But it, it, it's a necessary evil. It's oh, You have to do it. We'll return everything to you when we're done. Do we get Puerto Rico or... No, Puerto Rico's still there. Give me your factories for the love of God. Let me use them and abuse them. Yes, build, build, build. While well, we still have the bonuses to us. Are you done training yet? You are done training. That's good. Because I, I want to go to war. We're going straight to war. So the Royal Navy seizes Puerto Rico. After seizing New England, the Royal Navy set up to the Caribbean to seize the island of Puerto Rico. While the local National Guard wasn't informed of Canadian attempting to take over, they quickly stood down as they realized they had no chance of defending the island against the new occupiers. While many Americans from Puerto Rico are returning to the mainland to fight the Civil War, others have chosen to stay and pledge their allegiance to us in exchange for keeping their jobs. Nonetheless, our control over the Caribbean islands is now even stronger. I promise to return everything to you when we're done. Oh, crap. Alaska requests intervention. The American territory of Alaska has experienced a severe shortage of needed supplies following the outbreak of the Civil War. After a recent bombing the cities you know, uh, the Alaskan governor is fearing a breakdown of order, one that the far-off federal government will be too busy to respond to. Thus, he, like the New England governors, has requested that the Canadian government intervene for the interim to keep peace. Alaska's on its own. We shall help you out, Canada. Now, that does look really awesome, but as an American... You know, if that happens, I say just annex Yukon Territory and British Columbia. We should dominate the Pacific, let's be real. Just annex all of Canada. Well, Canada is special in its own accord, and we love Canada. They should really be part of one nation, one united Northern America. Oh, actually, shnikes. I, oh, I should have done this earlier. Partial mobilization all the way, boys, let's go. Electronic, that's not really great. I should have done this way earlier, that's my fault. 
With their seizure of Puerto Rico from the Americans, a Puerto Rican delegation was hastily assembled on the island from former members of the island's legislature, led by liberal Antonio Rafael Barcelo. One of the biggest opponents of the Puerto Rican independence outside of the nationalists, the delegation has proposed our government to be given independence in exchange for loyalty to the Entente. While discussions with the delegation dragged on, it became evident that the islanders will accept nothing more than independence, as, as an annexation into another nation without the government representation, as it happened with the U.S., would be unacceptable for the locals. Furthermore, mentioning to the delegation that they could become a part of the West Indies Federation caused outrage, as they quoted the Moyne report as a proof that the West Indies would not be able to properly handle Puerto Rico. With the talks having been finished for the day, the question remains, what to do with the island? Occupying it or giving it to West Indies Federation will clearly anger the locals, but granting it independence might outright weaken our position in the Caribbean in case they decide they no longer want us to help. To the Federation, uh, uh, occupation, give them the independence, becomes a puppet. Uh, you know what? I'm kind of okay with them being a puppet. Give the delegates, oh, I can play as them. Um... They might rebel. Just give them their independence for now. Because I don't want to deal with resistance, to be honest with you. I really don't care about the resistance down there. And I think it's time for us to help out the PSA. Actually, before we do that, do we have any, like, focuses down here that get enlarge the amount of things we give them? Uh, home of the Free. The new Home of the Free. New England Recruitment. Uh, Union of Interests. Eyes to the South. Reinforce Ottawa. Crossing the Border. Quid pro quo. If they accept our request to join the Entente, we will return all American lands which we do not pay for ourselves. That's fine. You know what? It's time to give them stuff. Uh, how many volunteers can we send? One. Shh. Bad words. Bad words. I can only send one division. Oh, bad words. Oh, I really want to send one tank division. It's not really worth sending because we won't have supplies to give them, though. Because we don't, basically, we don't have tanks. Oh, bad words. So many bad words I want to say, but not really. Hey, I want to send Marines. I really do, because they could be so good over there. Mmm. Because there's going to be quite a few river crossings. We don't have Mountaineers either. Obviously, infantry would be the most ideal to send. <sighs> bad words. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to get involved anyways. For the time being... We're going to send at least one infantry division. So be it. I want to send marines, but we're not fighting them directly yet. <sighs> Bad words. Anyways, well, that's going to conclude today's episode in which the PSA has refused our volunteers. Okay, well, that's interesting. Regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we will do our best to help out and defeat the Syndicalists. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.